Hello and welcome to this assembly instruction for Model Railroad 3D uh, Iron Ore Cars. The car we're going to build in this video is from Swedish State Railway and it has lit mass. But this video is also valid for other cars with a similar design. So let's first start with the file package content. When you download the file from uh, CG Trader, you will have a compressed file. You right click on that, select extract all and that will create a folder for you with all the uh, files inside. Now each component in this um, package will have three files. One is a wireframe uh, preview image, then it's the, the file without supports and then it's the file with supports. The last one has an, uh, typically a name is called underscore x1, which means one of them. But we're going to work with another one. This is the first one we find in the package which is called all parts. So we open that file in to our slicer and there we need to set a few items. One which is important is to set the anti-alias up to 4. Uh, we're going to set the layer thickness to 003 millimeter and uh, for my printer here I select also the normal and uh, bottom layer exposure time. Uh, for best results it's uh, always advisable to mix resins. And uh, here I'm mixing 30% uh, anycubic UV tough resin, which is a flexible resin, with uh, ABS like plus, which is a hard. Now, when you mix the resin by shaking bottle or whatever your method is, it will create uh, um, a thousand of air bubbles inside the resin and they need to go away before you start your printer. Otherwise, it will most likely lead to print failure. So we're leaving this for a few minutes, about half an hour. Meanwhile, we can check that the temperature uh, in the room is uh, preferably around 25 degrees. If not, use a radiator to get the temperature up. And after like two hours, the print is ready and then it looks like this. Now it's time to wash uh, away the excess resin which is on uh, top or covering the entire model. We're doing that in a, a wash and cure machine for like eight minutes. And here are the parts of the washing. It's the body, it's the chassis, it's the knee mechanism and also this chassis top here. So let's now remove them from the supports. The chassis top, I'm just uh, using my scalpel to cut away that and then I break it away. Then the neem mechanism needs some cutting with a side cutter. And then once I've cut the pieces off, I just remove last with my scalpel like that. All right, the body uh, is a bit more fragile, especially these uh, handrails going down. So we're cutting them first so we know that they are removed from their supports. And after that, we can cut the supports to the brake hoses and then these supports here to the pins. And then we're cutting away these guiding pins here. And with that done, it's just to bend the printing plate and sometimes it breaks sometimes not i was a bit unlucky so i have to cut it away from the last supports here otherwise typically it, it breaks away quite easily but uh, okay same routine for the chassis we're uh, cutting first uh, supports going up here in the later revisions of this chassis, it's uh, printed in an angle without the buffers. This is to improve the detail of it all and the uh, resulting quality and to reduce warp. But basically it's the same process to remove it from the support. So we're just, I'm cutting away all the supports around the edges of the chassis here and with that done we're, we're using the same method as we did with the body we bend the plate and off it goes 
like that. So very nice. Then leave everything to dry properly and then post cure it for four minutes. With, with that done, we can start to um, work a bit on the parts. Uh, I'm using a 240 grit sanding paper on a block uh, to sand away the remains of uh, any support like on this uh, chassis top here. Same goes for the, the neem uh, mechanism. Here you see there are some um, remaining supports in the, in the area where the neem will move around and they need to be removed. Uh, so the neem will work like it should. So I'm just removing them with my scalpel here. And same thing on the other side. Now all these uh, can be sanded away uh, using uh, my block of uh, sanding paper. So I'm just sanding that. And in later version I said uh, there is no buffers so then it's easier to sand as well. Uh, there's one more thing you need to be aware of here and that's that there are most often remains of uh, supports also on these uh, neem pins so the these needs to go away otherwise it's not possible to assemble the chassis top correctly and that will result in a that the car is too too tall uh, here are also some uh, remains of supports which would need to be taken care of so i'm using a file for that like this with the supports gone, we can now assemble the, these um, buffers. And uh, if you look at the buffers, one of them is curved and uh, the other one is flat. So this one's curved and this one's flat. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it is in real life. So now we're ready to assemble the neem mechanism into the chassis. I'm just putting a drop of oil there, there and there. So that will help the neem mechanism to move more easily like that and then it should go in the fork over the pin like that yeah then you take the other one and with those two in place we can assemble the chassis top easiest way to do this is to put it in place first and then just add four drops of uh, facet glue one in each corner and that will uh, do the trick if necessary also uh, add a drop in the middle now check that the movement of the neem mechanism seems to be working fine and then we can assemble the body on the chassis it should like snap into the chassis and uh, same here assemble it in place first and make sure that everything fits in a good way and then put a drop of facet glue dip a pin into it and uh, transfer that glue to the places where you want the glue of your model now now we need to prime this it's important to prime all 3d printed um, parts because uh, it will prevent uh, moisture from going in and out from the plastic and by doing that we prevent uh, warping i'm using this tamaya surface fine primer in gray color and i'm just misting this over the entire uh, model so i got all of the surfaces sealed properly and then I leave this to dry for a few hours before I start to paint it with acrylics. And if you don't have an airbrush, well, then uh, you can use a spray can to spray the, the car. Instead, it works perfectly as well. The advantage with an airbrush is that you can mix the paint to your liking or according to the prototype more precisely than buying a can of some random color now with the model painted we can um, uh, assemble the neem springs if you don't find neem springs in your hobby store you can make your own uh, i have a, a separate video on that uh, which is linked to this uh, product on cg trader 
lubricate the wheels and then assemble them into the position. Now, all we need to do now is to assemble also the neem couplings of your choice. I'm using Marklin short couplings here for this car. And we can also paint hoses and details black here. So these and also the buffers, I want the buffers black as well. So Now in most cases you want to fill this uh, car with uh, iron ore and before doing that use a food wrapper plastic. Otherwise your car will be deformed or warped like this. So use wrapper plastic, remove the cargo and then reinsert it without the plastic. <laughs> 